Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and this is episode 70 in my Automate Everything Minecraft series. In today's episode, I am actually going to upgrade my ore processing facility uh, just a little bit because I haven't touched it in a while and I know I can think make things more efficient. So let's go over there and check out the setup because it's been quite a while since I've been over there. Or at least uh, changed anything over there. So uh, it, first, let's get a sense of what's going on. Obviously, here is the reception area for the items. Um, also, this is a reception area because now I have two systems to get items over here. An item uh, interface system from Actual Editions and then a minecart system, which I think is really neat. But on this first floor here, I have redstone furnaces and it takes pulverized ores and stuff that I get from this downstairs area from all these pulverizers and it cooks it up there uh, so that's pretty much all that's going on over here uh, everything's being processed in the pulverizer and or the redstone furnace so that's pretty great now I have taken away the iron ore from the pulverizers because what I plan to do today is to upgrade my iron ore processing and I plan to do that through the use of induction smelters. And let me go back to my main base and then explain a little bit. So if I use induction smelters, I can actually get a better yield uh, because I can use cinnabar. Now, let me actually look up um, cinnabar real fast. If I right click on cinnabar, go to the induction smelter, we see that if I use cinnabar and iron ore, I actually get three iron ingots for every iron ore. Currently, I am processing iron ore in a pulverizer, and let me see if I can't find that real fast. And that gives me two iron ore because each pulverized iron is furnished into a single iron ingot. So, what I can do by using an induction smelter is actually increase the yield by quite a bit. So that's what I plan to do. Now at my other bay or at my ore processing facility, I have something like 7.2 million cinnabar sitting around. And I've been stockpiling that because I knew I would want to use it in the future and the time has come. So first things first, I need to grab a bunch of induction smelters. So let's grab those. I should have several made up. So I have 200, I won't need all of them. Uh, next, I will need some conversion kits because I would like to upgrade these induction smelters as far as I can. And next thing is I want to grab some augments. Now, first off, I want to make a new augment called Metallurgical Recovery. Now, what this does is provides a chance to not consume the metallurgical flux. Now, what that would be would be the cinnabar in this particular equation. So let, let's see what the crafting recipe is. It is two rich slag, a redstone servo, a silver gear, and hardened glass. Uh, that should not be hard at all to make. Let's see if we have a bunch of hardened glass. We do. That's fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of these. Now my first plan here is to use four of these augments in each one of the induction smelters. I may change that plan as we actually get towards implementation. But for right now, let's uh, let's try to make as many as we can. I know I'm a little low on rich slag, but I should be able to fix that. Let's see here. If I use cinnabar and iron ore, I think I will actually get rich slag as a byproduct. Let me double check that. I should have just typed in iron ore and then went to the induction smelter tab. I don't think I am going to get rich slag actually. I didn't see it there. So let's actually iron ore, induction smelter, find that. There's a lot of ways to process iron ore apparently. So no, I'll get nickel ore as the uh, secondary byproduct. So I will not get rich slag from that, which is kind of unfortunate. Rich slag is also very valuable. So. We'll deal with that. Anyways, let's grab our augments that we have made up. Uh, we only have 51. Oh, it was just glitchy, I guess. So let's actually travel over there and start to set this system up. 
So I actually have a third floor down here, or a third basement, and there's not a whole lot going on. I do have this stuff up here, but it's out of the way, so I don't really have to deal with it. If I punch a hole in this wall, I know I have access to my applied energistic system over here, so that will be what I will be using for importing and exporting items. So actually, I need to run over here, and I need to go to my applied energistic system over here and I need to grab iron ore I need to grab cinnabar as well so yeah 7.2 million cinnabar it is in a storage bus somewhere um, right here I believe storage bus uh, hooked up to a black hole unit that is so this down here is going to be set up a little bit differently than the pulverizers upstairs and the redstone furnaces what i can do with these is i can place uh, two of them beside each other like this whereas when i place these induction smelters i'm not going to do that because i'm going to need uh, pretty much all four sides here to be able to get everything in and out that i would like so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to dig a trench here uh, which is going to be underneath where i'm going to have my induction smelters Yes, induction smelters. I thought they were called induction furnaces for a second. So let's actually build, let's say, two of these trenches. So I'm going to have item duct here. I'm going to have item duct here. Below, I'm actually going to have fluid duct that I'm not going to use right now, but I probably will in the future. And then another trench. You know what? Let's do three of these trenches. And after I get these dug, I can start placing down some fluid duct, which I'm actually not going to use quite yet, like I said. But I will likely use it in the future to increase my ore processing facility or make it even better, I guess. Okay, so let's grab some fluid duct. I'm just going to grab uh, some super laminar fluid duct right now. I could use the um, signalum plated fluid duct, but I'm not going to. I will be using signalum plated item duct, though. So, unfortunately, my armor makes me move a little faster than I would like. Okay, that's better, and that's worse. You know, if I just stay on the even ground, this would be a whole lot easier. So, yeah. You know what? I'm not even going to worry about that just right now. Okay, so what I need to do is all this fluid duct needs to be hooked up. So what I can do is I can hook it up like this. And then, you know what, over here, I'm going to leave this bare. That way I know that there's an access point to all this fluid duct uh, because I'm going to put all my stuff back here. So what I need to do now is let's actually place down some of these induction smelters. Now how I'm going to have these oriented is I'm actually going to put them like this. And that's because I need access to pretty much all of the sides. I need access to the bottom, both sides and the top. So by doing it this way, rather than say something like this, I can get access to more sides. And then, did I go one too far? I went one too far. Okay, so, cool. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. I wanted to use the two singles before I went on and use the rest of them. Okay, that's good. And then last line, at least for right now. Did I just do that? Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh my goodness. I'm confusing myself. I don't normally place them like this. So it just triggered something in my brain that says, hey, this isn't right. No, this is exactly right. This is exactly how I want this. Um, just so I can get this last one. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down some impulse or some signal plated impulse item duct. So let me grab some of that. And we're going to have quite a bit of this stuff. So I'm going to need... 
yeah, let's just grab like five stacks. That should be good. So now these impulse item ducts will also be used to carry power to the induction smelters, which is why I'm using the signalum plated variety. Unfortunately, I don't have a way to shut off those pulverizers upstairs. I guess I could probably try to use something like a sound muffler, but you know what? I have sound mufflers. Is that what it's called? Let's see if this will help. No, not really. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. Uh, Whoa, where'd my impulse item duck go? Okay, so I'm gonna have to set these up over here is actually I need to do one more line. And then I can tie them together. These will all be inputs, but they will all not be the same input. And what I mean is that uh, one of them, one line connected to each induction smelter will be for the cinnabar, and then the other line will actually be for the iron ore. So let's see here. Let's pull this in. So basically, every other line is going to be connected. And what I can do is. Something like this. It's not particularly pretty, but it should work. And then these two will need to be connected. Which that's kind of unfortunate that I have that there. Let's actually move that to be right here. That way it's not covered by the impulse or the signal inflated impulse item duct here. And let's actually wrench this. Cool. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to get some storage set up for the cinnabar and for the iron ore. Uh, do these have anything in them? I'm not really sure. So let's do one here. It, that one doesn't. Let's see if this one does. Cool, they do not. So I don't actually need those. Let's go ahead and get some servos as well. Two servos. And these will be on all the time. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so the next thing is I actually need to get the items into them. So let's get that set up. And like I said, I have access to my applied energistic system right here, so that shouldn't be a problem. Actually, you know what? I can do this one better. I can use fewer channels if I use an ME interface here. And that's what I'm going to do, I think. So... Let's set this up here. Let's actually get some more item duct here. And then I need a couple more servos to make this work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these up and I'm going to set these up with filters. Okay, so this one will be whitelist cinnabar, always on. This one will be whitelist uh, iron ore, always on. And what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to tell this interface to keep a couple stacks of cinnabar and a couple stacks of iron ore. That was dumb. Didn't mean to do that. Let me find my way out of here. Okay, better. Okay. 
Okay, so where I need that. Okay, so once I hook this up by grabbing some covered cable here, I don't know if that's enough. That'll be enough. Oh yeah, that's enough. So once this connects up to the system, it should start filling. Okay, so I can go ahead and do that. Okay, cool. Looks like it's working. So the next thing I need to do is I need to set up the output, I guess. So let's go ahead and grab some signal, more signal and plate at item reduct and start hook this up. And that will be the output, so it'll be on the top. And thankfully, if I set the induction smelters to auto output to the top, I don't have to use servos. I don't know how familiar everyone is with uh, thermal expansion and thermal um, dynamics, I think, is the other mod. But uh, yeah, pretty nifty mods. So now we need to tie in all the these three together. And once again, I'm going to need my crescent hammer or my wrench, as most people would call it. Uh, I need to wrench that. I need to wrench that. And let's. And then same thing over here. Okay, so yeah, there's not a whole lot of room here, but whatever. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to bring this impulse item duct up to the ME interface up there. And I think I can just connect it over here. So that should work. Okay, I know the plumbing is a mess back here, but I shouldn't be back here very often, so it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is let's go ahead and upgrade all of these induction smelters with these conversion kits here. And that shouldn't take but just a minute. I'm not exactly sure how many I have and how many induction smelters I have down here, but it is a decent amount. Okay, one more row, and then we can actually start configuring these things like they need to be configured. Okay, cool. Let's actually get rid of a bunch of stuff we don't need real fast. Uh, we shouldn't need these anymore. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll need any of that. I don't think I will, but I'll keep some just in case. Okay, so what I'm going to do with all of these induction smelters is uh, they are going to be, actually I might have to unlock this, I'm not sure, but as far as configuration, I need to put them to green, purple, and then the top needs to be an output. Green is the first input, purple is the second output. On this row, it'll be green, purple. On this row, it'll be pur purple, green. So it'll be purple, green. And I don't think I have to unlock this. So in addition to setting all of the induction smelters up like this, I'm gonna do input on the bottom and that'll be for use at a later date. And then over here, I'm going to add four of these metallurgical recovery augments. So I'm gonna do that for all of these induction smelters. That's gonna take a little while, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. And once I have that done, I will be right back. Finally, now that I have all of these configured and we can actually check them real fast to make sure cinnabar and iron ore is actually in these things, we need to hook up a power supply. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hook up flux duct to all three of these different lines of signal and plated impulse item duct and I will do that by digging into the wall here. Now I actually 
believe that I have a connection available if I go up. So let's uh, try that out. Let's see. I don't want to go through any torches. So let's go right here. Yes, there is right here. This should be an, an active line where I can pull from. So let's grab some flux duct here and just drop this down. And then this will run. And I just heard these things come on, so that's a good sign. Um, we're just going to connect it up like this. And then to make everything look smart, I'm going to use some, some covers here. But that didn't go as planned. Let's try this real fast. Okay, so... And then the rest of it, I should just be able to replace with stone. But I think that is just about all for the setup. I think it is done. Oh, and I didn't do that. Whoops. Oh, well. So let's uh, double check everything's working. The output is not working. Okay, so what are we doing here? The auto output is enabled here. I'm not really sure why we're not getting it outputted. Okay, so for a second I thought this might be full of items, but it is not. So I do have output on the top here. It looks like it is working, it's just not working. Okay, so I wonder if it just um, had connection anxiety or something because it's it's at least partially working. Yeah, and some of them, okay, it just seems to be some of them just aren't outputting like they should. You know what? If it continues to be an issue, I will fix it. Uh, in the future, but for right now, I'm just gonna I'm gonna call it good. Uh, simply, if if it continues to be an issue, I can put servos on here, or I can put a retriever up uh, right there. But for right now, it seems to be at least partially working. So whatever. Uh, okay. So in today's episode, I basically improved my ore processing system over here by adding some iron ore processing that is a little more efficient than uh, I had before. Before I had ore doubling as in my, I pulverized the iron ore which gave me two pulverized iron dust for each iron ore I had. But now I can get three iron ingots out of each iron ore I have. So obviously that's an improvement. And yeah that's pretty much all I did today. So if you liked today's episode definitely give it a like if you enjoy watching automation in modded minecraft then definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already anyway signing off i am minecraft phenom 08 and i will see you next time